Hello everyone, welcome to your butterfly garden training video. So just a couple of things about the butterfly garden. Um, it is undergoing a deep transformation right now, which kind of sounds, but what I mean by that is that I'm like structural things are changing about the garden, which I think is going to help breathe really wonderful new life into the garden. Um, but in doing so, I'm going to need a lot of help. So I'm really thankful that you are here and watching this and getting ready to help me. So the butterfly garden is a, is an ornamental garden. It's not meant for anything to be edible. It's just supposed to be beautiful all year round. Now the previous caretaker really focused on annuals and I don't think we have the budget or the um, consistent sustainable manpower <laughs> to take care of that at least I don't I don't think that's where we're gonna start my goal is to make the garden um, each raised bed or each each garden bed to have these big full uh, perennial evergreen flowering big plants and then later on we can go add the annuals as you all continue to stick around and volunteer we will be able to do that so that's just kind of a quick little vision of the garden um, because we are undergoing a big deep transformation of the garden there are I mean there's tons of trash that needs to be taken out there's you know we need to be pulling out all the dead plants or the plants that are no longer going to be serving that sustainable vision um, and we are going to need to be putting in just tons of wood chip mulch to take care so take care of the the soil so in doing all that it's it's a lot of heavy lifting it's gonna be a lot of walking you're gonna definitely get your 10,000 steps it's gonna be a lot of hard work but I'm optimistic that I don't have to do all that hard work by myself all the time and that you guys will be here to help so I'm very thankful for that if you want to volunteer and you're here and you're like I can't have you left that's fine we've got smaller jobs too sifting white rocks out of dirt wonderful for those who need to just do light lifting we love it we we need all the kind of help we can get so whatever your level is there is a job so I'm gonna go kind of quickly through the different uh, jobs we will have in the garden at least starting out and kind of train you on where the bins are where the dumpsters are where the wood chips are and all that so up, I'm up actually currently not in the butterfly garden. I'm currently up in the third tier parking lot with the wood chip piles and I'll show you that right now and then I'll show you the green bins and the dumpsters where we're pretty much going to be putting all the trash. Really quick about the green bins. There are two types of green bins. There's the smaller ones which are only for food waste and there's the larger ones which are for yard waste. If we, they're labeled, if we put the yard waste in the food waste, I will get a very grumpy call from Republic Services and they'll charge us money and it's, let's not do it. So let's make sure that we're getting the large green bins that say yard waste only and using those. Okay. Okay, Let so as you. you can see, we've got eight of these large bins and then a bunch of the smaller bins. The smaller bins are gonna be on the right hand side. The bins that we're going to be using are on the left hand side. So they will say, I mean, hopefully the stickers haven't come up, come off, but they will say garden use only, no food. And you can tell, you can tell that they're bigger. This one's taller. So if you're pulling up a small one and it says no yard waste, you gotta bring it back. You cannot fill it with that. We want this garden use. And they're really, really big. Fill it up to the brim. And this is where we leave it. That will get picked up on Wednesdays. So sometimes I will be pulling out all my stuff and come up to get a bin and they're not. Um, there's no none left, they're all full. Just leave the weeds in the garden. That's okay, you don't have to worry about bringing them up because there'll be no place for, to put them. So there are the green bins and the dumpsters. And we're walking down the parking lot. This is where they had the old 
Uh, this is like a kindergarten garden, but no one takes care of it. And there used to be chickens there, but those are all gone now. So up here, the city took down a couple trees like almost a year ago and had a, they've done nothing with the wood chips. So I figured they were maybe fair game. <laughs> so you can see where I've been pulling from. There's this pile here again. The top layer is going to be those really big pieces. We don't want those. So we'll dig underneath and get these smaller bits. And then just over there, that one's great. It's a ton of small bits as well. Same color. Uh, we really want to stick to a similar color if possible. I think this was, yeah, this was a redwood. So we'll stick to, this is great size. All right, so I've got a large green bin and this is called the butterfly garden but it's also called the children's garden and there's a reason for that everything is very small so going under this with the large green bin is very tricky and this is gonna sound crazy but there is one really good way to do it to make sure you don't break yourself and make sure you don't break the arch so you're gonna take the green bin get it as low as you possibly can I'm talking like drag it on the ground Feel it through. And there you go. The other way, if you were to just try and pull it through, it'll get stuck and break the arch. And unfortunately, when this is really full, you, you gotta do that the back. <laughs> you gotta do that going back. If you want to go an extra step and fill up a wheelbarrow and then take it through the arch and fill up the green bin, by all means, go for that. I just generally do that way. Another thing you can see is that we're being really consistent with um, bordering everything with rocks. It didn't used to be this way but I think that that consistency makes the garden um, look more cohesive and just look more polished. We're also going to be or filling all the planting areas with this mulch that I showed you up on the hill. Now I really want to get down low and highlight for you here just the size of it. It's very, very small. This might be like the largest piece that I would accept. Really, really try and get those small bits if you can. And you can see that we've got, this is called the mound. The mound is filled. Over here is filled. So this might be one of the jobs. You know, we have to pull the weeds here or fill here. Those are kind of jobs that we'll be doing. And this is a really great example of, this was just filled with dead plants and weeds and look how nice it looks. Another thing that we wanna do is put a very thick layer. Um, this is probably about an inch or two thick and I think that that is perfect. We don't want to be seeing any soil. So if you are on wood chip duty, gotta make sure that it's getting filled. Now, how do you know if a raised bed is ready for wood chips? My goal is to somehow label these raised beds um but that might not i don't know we'll see how that works out but in the meantime if a raised bed is empty basically empty of plants i mean you can tell that that or there's got weeds and grass and weirdness happening but this is all clean this is ready for wood chips so if you see a bed that looks like this where there's leaves and like weird sticks and the weird blue things and this one is not ready for wood chips so don't bother putting wood chips here because we're just gonna have to take them all out ready not ready ready not ready and we won't worry about the irrigation I'll have to fix that so if any of you are actually good with fixing irrigation maybe I'll put you on that duty one more thing is that we are pretty much going to be emptying most of these pots Around these, I think, are the last few. There were, gosh, 50 of them. Oh, there's some back there, too. And the goal is to empty them and just kind of make a pile of the soil to the side of the, the gazebo. What I'll do is break up the soil and slowly add it to these beds as needed um, and then pull out the roots, and that can be one of the jobs that someone can do. We will probably keep a few of the pots to border the gazebo. We might also just swap them for some terracotta to kind of keep with that same color scheme with the rocks. 
but if we're getting rid of pots, we're going to stack them in a pile here so that we can give them to the previous caretaker. He does want them back if we are not going to be using them. So this is an example of not heavy lifting work, is sifting these white rocks out, putting them in this little thing. We might use them later, we might just offer them on Craigslist. Um, also I found 42 tennis balls. Another thing would be to clean the tennis balls and bring them back to the playground for the children. Another job we've got, I mean, like this is in the walkway, Those are that's in a walkway, you gotta put those in the green bins. But then also bringing up the trash. So I showed you the dumpsters, all of this kind of stuff needs to be brought up to the trash bin. Um, if there's stuff that looks like it could be reused, we will put it aside. I guess there's a nice piece of wood there. We'll put it aside and then I'll decide if I want to use it or not. And if we don't use it, we will offer it again in that spot on the gazebo. Generally speaking with weeding, like this is a raised bed that is not ready for this. We're pretty much going to be pulling all the little things out. We'll leave the butterfly bush and we'll leave these uh, lilies and we'll leave the sweet pea bush. But everything else is probably going to be coming out just to kind of have a clean slate to start with. And then one more major project that we'll be working on is pulling out the dead manzanita. All through here, sorry the sun is tricky today, there's all this gray dead manzanita. It looks like this. And though beautiful, it has kind of no real purpose in our garden, but people on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist went crazy for it when I was able to bring it or put it in the uh, parking lot for them for free. So basically this would be something we would take and bring to the very far side of the parking lot and post on Facebook Marketplace or, or take pictures and send them to me and I'll post them on Facebook Marketplace and uh, have people come pick them up for free. I hope that was a helpful little mini orientation on kind of where to get things in the garden and generally where everything is and what we're going to be working on. Um, again, as you know, some of these major cleanup projects finish, then there'll be major planting projects and then major maintenance projects. Um, and I'm just so thankful that you guys are all here in this kind of early stage. It's been tricky <laughs> to have enough energy to pull this off myself, but I'm very thankful that you are all willing to take the time to help. I know, you know, an hour a month or two hours a month kind of seems insignificant or could seem insignificant, but to me it's huge because that's then two hours that I'm not breaking my back up and down the stairs with the stuff or, you know, exhausting myself doing it all myself. And I'm really thankful to have help because two massive gardens is just too much for one person. And I really feel that with the energy that your efforts will save me, I can make um, the garden program or even the Seven Circles garden that much better with that energy. So I really appreciate you coming out and watching this video and keeping these things in your mind as potential projects that you, with how you know your body and uh, what, what your body can handle. Hope you can keep those in mind and I will see you at the end of February, I guess. All right, thanks so much.